Hey guys, it is Tyler here, back once again, here with another episode of Assassin's Creed The Truth. I said in the last Truth video that I would be temporarily ending this series after episode 25. However, I came up with a better idea, which is to make the Truth series videos in seasons, as in when a new Assassin's Creed comes out, make a whole bunch of Truth videos that come out of it, and then put it on a hiatus until the next game, unless some big topic or great idea comes to mind. That way I don't feel pressured to make this series if I don't have any ideas and it keeps this series on topics pertinent to what is going on in the world of Assassin's Creed. I've already got a whole bunch of episodes planned out over the coming months that have come out of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, starting of course with this video, which is the modern day of Assassin's Creed Odyssey Explained, in which I'll briefly recap you with what happened in Origins with Layla, the Isu Temple messages and what they set up. Then get into what the hell went on during the year gap between Origins and Odyssey, how Layla ended up the leader of an assassin cell, and who are all her team members. Then we can get into the meat of the video, what Layla and her team are doing now, what their goal in Odyssey is, and all the interesting references and lore elements that are explored through the modern day story. Then finally going into the secrets that were left behind to Layla and Atlantis, the Isu messages from Aletheia, the stuff of Hermes, what it all means, and of course my theories as to where this story is going in the future. There is so much to get through in this video, so without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> Assassin's Creed Origins introduced a new modern day storyline and main playable protagonist, Egyptian American Layla Hassan, who was an employee and Templar at Abstogo Industries, working in the Animus Research Division. Layla is essentially the Rebecca Crane of Abstogo, modifying the Animus and enhancing it in her own unique ways for better portable use and clearer simulations. The story of Origins had Layla, without informing any of her superiors, use her own modified animus to relive the memories of the first assassins Bayek of Siwa and Aya of Alexandria, later known as Amunet. Due to her rebellious nature and not informing Abstergo, the Templars sent out a team to find her. Layla was able to use the results of the bleeding effect to stop the Abstergo operatives, however, she was later discovered by assassin leader William Miles father of former modern day protagonist Desmond Miles, and asked to join the assassins and aid in their research. Layla agreed to help the assassins, but refused to join their ranks. Now the other major part of the modern day story of Origins comes from the Isu Temple messages. I made a truth video months ago explaining all of that, and I highly recommend you go and watch that now. It will be in the top link in the description as it gives heaps of detailed information that will better help you understand the deeper elements of what we will be getting into in this video today. The way I see it is this video is essentially the sequel to that video. And Odyssey definitely continues plenty of elements that were set up in Origins. But to give you a brief recap, these Isu messages were sent through Bayek in 48 BCE, directed at Layla to tell her what her purpose is. The main message is, Break the code. Break the node. The code being time, which the Isu understand differently to us. They see time as a language that can be read, spoken, and written. The code is time, and time is code. The messages tell Layla she must not simply be able to read time, but change it. Alter the calculations of existence just as the Isu did. This is to stop another catastrophic incoming node. Node being a point where all simulations meet, an event that can't be stopped. These messages are also what really drove home the idea of reality as a simulation and how time can be altered. To not just see different simulations, but change them. Break the code, break the node. There are also references to Layla's animus being the key to do just that, but we will pick up on this whole break the code, break the node stuff later on in the video. Let's get back to where we left off in the story at the end of Origins. William Miles recruits Layla to aid the assassins and says he is taking her to a safe house in Alexandria. Next thing we know, Odyssey starts us off with Layla as an assassin cell leader in a loft in London. What happened in between all that, and who are all these team members with her? Layla worked alongside the assassins to the point she changed her mind and joined the assassin order, quickly rising to the rank of cell leader. She befriended several higher ranking assassins in that time as well, including Charlotte Delacruz, Kiyoshi Takakura, and Harlan Cunningham. 
We also know that the Isu messages in Origins made an impression on Layla and she has been on the hunt since that time for Isu artifacts that are time altering, specifically the staff of Hermes. Through her research, she found clues that led her to believe that famed historian Herodotus had information that would lead to the staff. Layla put a cell team together on this mission to find the staff that we see in Odyssey. Obviously, Layla herself, a cell leader, Dr. Victoria Bibo, Kiyoshi Takakura, and Alana Ryan. Victoria is a psychiatrist, researcher, and former Templar as well. She left Abstergo and was quickly recruited by William Miles. Victoria is known in Assassin's Creed Universe previously for her appearances in the Assassin's Creed Heresy novel and the Assassin's Creed Last Descendants graphic novel series. Kiyoshi Takakura is essentially the muscle for the team. He is especially trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat and is known to always carry a sword around with him. Kiyoshi is also known in the universe for his appearances in the Assassin's Creed Titan comic series as well as the Uprising comic series. The final member of the team is Alana Ryan, a college student who specialises in ancient documents and church construction. Layla writes in a report that Alana is still in training and not ready to be on their mission just yet, so they keep her on as an advisor, not on location. She pretty much is there to chime in with her detailed research and historical knowledge. She's this team's Sean Hastings. This is her first appearance and introduction as well to the Assassin's Creed universe. With the team all together, Layla continued with her research and eventually found the location of a lost book by Herodotus, which was accompanied by the ancient Spear of Leonidas. This gave Layla the information about an ancient Spartan Mystios who wielded the spear and led then to the story of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, with Layla jumping in her animus to find information that would lead her to the staff of Hermes. At this point of the story, Layla and her team are regularly moving their operation, as most assassin cells do, as they are constantly being hunted by Abstergo operatives. So with Odyssey, the team is posted in a loft in London, with Kiyoshi standing on constant watch, Alana doing external research, while Layla and Victoria run through the animus simulations of the Mystios to help find information on the staff. Throughout the story of Odyssey, we jump out of the animus only four times in total, during this time we get some glimpses into some of the backstory I have just gone through, what their mission is, as well as where the story is probably going. There are also some interesting references made I felt worth talking about that may not have a major impact on the future story. For example, we are introduced to the location in Odyssey called The Forge, an ancient Isu structure built to construct powerful weapons including the Spear of Leonidas and the Sword of Deimos. After that moment of the game where we're introduced to the Forge, we are taken out of the Animus for the second time for Layla to take a break. Layla makes reference to what the Forge could be used for, perhaps even improving the staff of Hermes once they find it. Victoria even references previous Staves of Eden and their use in the modern day, mentioning Nikola Tesla blowing up one in Russia causing the Tunguska event. If you're interested in that information, I also have a truth video all about that that I'll leave as the second link in the description. Sorry, shameless plug. But when talking about previous Staves of Eden, Layla says that the staff of Hermes, the one they are searching for, is different. Saying if what she saw in Egypt is correct, this staff does more than just control minds, it controls physics and time. Again, this is an important detail. The Isu messages and origins have pushed Layla to this goal of being able to see, read, and write time itself. This is the ultimate goal here with finding this staff. The third time you exit the Animus in Assassin's Creed Odyssey is after the Mystios discovers Atlantis and their biological father, Pythagoras, who is in possession of the staff of Hermes that has kept him alive to the age of 150. Layla and her team leave the loft in London and travel to Greece. There Layla dives under the volcanic island that Atlantis is covered by and heads to the entrance where she was last in the Animus. Layla needs more information from the Mystios, however, to use Atlantis and activate it so that she herself can retrieve the staff. So back in the Animus she goes. Before we go any further though, let's talk about the staff of Hermes and Hermes himself. What are their roles and what did we learn about them in Odyssey? Hermes Trismegistus is a revered Isu who was worshipped by both the Egyptians and the Greeks as a god. He had a cult of followers as well, known as Hermeticists, who make an appearance in the Assassin's Creed universe as far back as Brotherhood in the Da Vinci Disappearance DLC. 
In fact, it is known through the Facebook game Assassin's Creed Project Legacy years ago that it was Hermes himself who gave his staff to Pythagoras in the 6th century BCE. The Project Legacy story is from the perspective of Pythagoras' protege, Kyros of Zarex. In the desert of Greece, they meet Hermes himself who wields the staff. Hermes sees Pythagoras as a worthy successor as Creos falls to his knees in exhaustion and passes out. By the time he awakes, Hermes is nowhere to be seen and his master Pythagoras is wielding the staff. I guess it is from there that Pythagoras found the entrance to Atlantis and used the staff to keep himself alive for all this time. Which is also worth noting is not the first time we've seen a piece of Eden keep someone alive long past their lifespan. Though not with the level of youthfulness that the staff bestows, Altair's apple kept him alive into his 90s during the 12th and 13th centuries AD, far past the lifespan of a normal person at that time. In fact, at the end of Revelations, we see the effects of putting the apple down instantly. Altair loses his sight, sits down on a seat, and moments later, passes on. The staff of Hermes seems to be more powerful than that, keeping the wielder at an age they were when they first came into contact with the staff. At this point in the story of Odyssey, Layla is back in the Animus to see how Atlantis is activated so that she can retrieve the staff. During this section of the game, the Mystios must collect four Isu artifacts to activate Atlantis. Once each one is collected from battling a mythical creature, the Mystios can return to Atlantis and place it in one of the four pillars. <laughs> four pillars. When each artifact is delivered, a recorded message from an Isu known as Aletheia occurs. These Isu messages make clear the changes that Odyssey's story is seemingly making to what was set up in the Isu messages in Origins. Rather than Layla's animus being what is used to subvert and change reality, it is the Staff of Hermes, an extremely powerful piece of Eden with the capabilities of bending reality, at least theoretically. Aletheia immediately pokes fun at the other Isu who have spoken to humans in the past. The way they talk in riddles and codes, talking down to humans, lying to them, manipulating them, and not giving them all the information. Acquiring contemporaneity. Acquiring a voice, that's what. I'm taking over your recordings. The humans have had enough of your pompous speeches. Aletheia has four main messages in the main story. Each are activated after collecting a piece of Eden for Pythagoras in the world. Each message has a different purpose. One message is to the Isu who send these messages in the first place. The second is to the Mystios, the third is to Pythagoras, and the fourth is to Layla. The first message, the one directed to the Isu, shows Aletheia's point of view on both her kind and the humans. How the Isu have controlled and manipulated humans, maneuvered them like chess pieces in a grand game, being revered like gods. Aletheia calls out the Isu for all they have done to the world, for manipulating time and simulations for their own gains, as she puts it, You Isu who try to rewrite the laws of the universe, you who manipulate human progress, what do you hope to achieve? Aletheia also makes a point about the original purpose of the Pieces of Eden that I will mention now and draw back to later. You treat humans as youthful apes. How many artifacts have you created to control their minds? That it's obvious Aletheia is not like most Isu we have come into contact with throughout previous Assassin's Creed games. She's clearly more sympathetic towards humans and is disgusted by what the Isu have done to them and the world over millennia. It is because of all the Isu's meddling and simulation tampering that these catastrophic events keep on coming to Earth. You run endless simulations to find one in which nothing changes. It's pointless. Change will come, and not just the so-called end of the world you fear. You call yourself saviors, but tell me, would this doomsday have appeared had you not pulled on the threads of the universe in the first place? Aletheia then makes a clear statement on her mission with these messages. She's here to stay and make a change. I am taking over your retransmissions. You don't speak for all of us anymore. I am as Isu as you but I will no longer be part of your exploitation. This first message is an interesting change to the previous Isu we have seen throughout the Assassin's Creed universe. Yes, there have been some that are sympathetic to humans that we have seen, like Consus, for example, but none have made an appearance in these main games. Minerva, Jupiter, and Juno have all used the humans in their own way, feeding them necessary information for their own benefit. None have had solely the humans' interests in mind, until now, at least by the looks of it. 
The second and third messages aren't as relevant to the modern day story, being directed to the Mystios and Pythagoras. The message to the Mystios is one of encouragement, one that pushes them forward on their journey and affirms their impact in life and that their future will be great. Despair is not our only legacy. You're like me, a rebel against your destiny. You're not just a mercenary, you're a hero for the ages. Whereas the message to Pythagoras is one of warning, of the work he has done on Earth and what his legacy should be, how he must understand his role and know when it is time to move on, know when it is time to let the staff go and pass on. It's clear to me that even this tiny dose of cosmic understanding has twisted your mind. I'm sorry, the precursors should never have shared knowledge you weren't ready for. At this moment, you possess a powerful artifact. It has extended your life long enough. As hard as it may be, it's time to pass it on. It's someone else's turn to balance the equations. This stuns Pythagoras and later on impacts him and the very future of the staff itself. It is the fourth message, however, that is probably the most prevalent to the modern day story as it is directed to Layla herself. Alethea refers to Layla as Traveler of Many Times and makes clear that she aims to help Layla on a mission of change, to change time, to rewrite the rules the world has lived by, those of the Isu. We've been held back too long by precursor rules. It's time for new paths with new possibilities. This is not an era of control, but of creation. I've gathered some like-minded precursors to make a new start. We'll stop interfering and start enabling. So Layla, it seems, has an ally in Aletheia. Someone who is working to aid her. But how exactly can she do that? Well, it is the next line that is very telling. From your point of view, it will take a considerable amount of time to prepare. But when we're ready, you're welcome to join us. After all, all you have to do is press a button and run another simulation. So somehow in time, Alethea wants Layla to come and visit her and her precursor allies in the past through an animus simulation. She says it will take a considerable amount of time to prepare. So I don't expect this to be something Layla will be doing with her animus next, but perhaps in the future we'll be seeing some direct animus simulations of the time of the Isu. Alethea also has some side messages that can be found when exploring the entrance to Atlantis further. A few have some interesting, relevant points, so I thought I'd mention that. One being the fact that Juno is now dead, and how that helps Alethea and her cause. At least one of the worst influences is gone in my present anyway. Juno's power was immense. I never would have been able to transmit these recordings if she was still here. This message also points out how truly powerful Juno is, even compared with other Isu. The fact that Alethea could not transmit recordings at all if Juno was around to be able to stop her. Another excellent point I liked from the side messages was Alethea's references to information given by Isu to humans in the past. Precursor sites have often included an educational mandate aimed at humans. I'm sure you already realize these generous revelations are strategic. This points out past Isu manipulation of humans, not even just in history, but in the modern day. We saw in the Desmond games he was manipulated and pushed forward from controlled and edited messages by the Isu. It's those deceitful half-truths that led to so much chaos with the Isu and human interactions. It's why when it came to the potential end of the world in 2012 with Desmond, he didn't have time to make a clear decision. He had to decide on the spot, because it was only at the last moment that the whole picture was given to him. Before that, he was only guided and told what specific information the Isu wanted him to hear. One reason being because the Isu loved being revered by the humans and viewed like gods. Alethea even referenced that. I shouldn't be surprised. My fellow precursors love being treated like gods. Why not create pets worthy of that reputation? Alethea's messages are pertinent and very relevant, I believe, to where the modern day is going. But before I can explain any more of the reasons why, let's get the full picture. Let's talk about the modern day ending of Assassin's Creed Odyssey and wrap up what the hell has happened and where it all seems to be going. After four of the pieces of Eden are collected and the four messages of Alethea are received, the Mystius plans to seal Atlantis away. Depending on the choices made by the players, Pythagoras with some resistance realises his time with the staff of Hermes is up and gives it to the Mystios, his child and successor. Once the Mystios is handed the staff, Pythagoras passes on and we leave the Animus with the Mystios saying Atlantis is too dangerous. I must seal it. 
We are then taken back out of the Animus to Layla, who is still at the entrance of Atlantis. Layla activates the temple and waits for the staff to appear. After some time waiting for something to happen, Layla appears disheartened, when suddenly, the Mystios appears, holding the staff, having lived two and a half millennia with it in their possession. Essentially, the Mystios knows that Layla is the one to pass the staff onto, the one they have been waiting for. Pythagoras was right. You are the key to the prophecy. You will restore the balance, Layla. Listen to me. Order, chaos. If either triumphs alone, the world dies. Which is an interesting point about the Templar and Assassin conflict. To create the balance, one cannot exist without the other. And if one truly triumphs over another, the world dies. But the most telling quote from the Mystios is one that drives the modern day story forward in my opinion. When you are done, destroy it. Destroy them all. I take that line as a reference to the Pieces of Eden. The story of Layla that has been set up in both Origins and now Odyssey seems to be revolving around the Isu and the way they have continued to manipulate and control the fate of the world and humans even after their time is done. It has caused catastrophe, war and chaos. The Isu have done this through the way they see and have treated humans, controlling them with Pieces of Eden, as well as their meddling with time and different simulations. To say, when you are done, destroy it, destroy them all, I see that as Layla must be the one to wipe out the remains of the Isu, their technological control over everything, their influence, and their history. The Mystios does say, when you are done, so Layla still has to break the code of time to stop this catastrophic incoming node, whatever that may be. But once that is done, the pieces of Eden must be destroyed. They are too powerful and have brought nothing but chaos to the humans and the world. But that's the end goal. First, Layla must break the code of time using the staff of Hermes. The Mystius gives the staff to Layla and then passes on. It is Layla's burden to bear. They are continuing to set up Layla as a person who will rift time and break the code. They are yet to elaborate on what the incoming node is, however. The staff looks to have a major role to play in this, though. Perhaps the staff linked to the Animus can help that, to calculate the exact past simulations properly and where and what to alter. The Animus would almost be a look into the past, and the staff can be what then alters the specifics of that. Also, Aletheia calling for Layla to visit could be done going through even further in the past, or just finding more messages and retransmissions from her in other Animus simulations. It is Aletheia that seems to want to give the information of the ways of the Isu more than ever before, someone who seemingly doesn't want to lie to the humans, but bring them to her level, as an equal. Give her that sixth sense and therefore the ability to not just stop the incoming node, but rewrite what caused it in the first place. Rewrite the Isu influence and remove their control over people even to this day. From your point of view, it will take a considerable amount of time to prepare. But when we're ready, you're welcome to join us.